My family has a bit of a history with living in haunted houses. There was a point in my life where I lived in one with my cousin and grandfather. For the most part, it's really not that bad. I even talked to other people who have had similar experiences, with doors shutting on their own, sudden temperature drops, gusts of wind that couldn't be explained by a draft that blow curtains aside, and creaking floorboards that happen in succession, like footsteps that continue down the hall and stop right at your door. Over time, you learn to deal with it. The activity happens daily, but never lasts for more than a few seconds per interaction. That house with my cousin and grandpa worked out quite well for a while. That was, until the knife incident. A knife had just levitated off the kitchen counter and flew right by my cousin's face. Even my grandpa was spooked at that one, and he could tell you several stories about times he had slapped a poltergeist. We immediately packed up after that one. I moved back in with my parents, and my cousin and grandfather moved into a new house a few towns over. I went there a few times, and always got bad vibes from the place. This was around the time the movie The Shaggy Dog came out. My cousin and grandfather loved it, and ended up getting a dog just like it. I met it only once. It smelt terrible. A few weeks later I went back to try to meet it again, but that was no longer going to be possible. The dog had died. My cousin said it liked to sleep in the backyard by fitting its upper body under the shack out there. One day they pulled the poor guy out of there because he wasn't responding. Not only had its head been cut clean off, but the head was missing entirely. No sign of it anywhere. My grandfather and cousin rationalized the whole thing as being perpetrated by a family of possums that lived nearby. But I didn't buy that story for a second. At the very least, it had to have been some neighbor who wasn't right in the head. A few years later, I spent the summer at their place. This time, my cousin finally admits that the place really is haunted. I should have figured something like this would have happened, and at that time wished I had known before making plans to stay there. My cousin told me he knew for sure one day after grandfather left to run some errands. He was chilling upstairs when a pitch black figure with a slant-eyed mask, rushed out of the attic. The thing chased my cousin around the house for a while until the front door started to jiggle. My grandpa had come back because he had forgotten something. The masked figure ran right back up the stairs and crawled back into the attic. It never did show up again, though. Then my cousin asked me if I remembered the dog. Obviously, I wouldn't forget something like that. My cousin tells me that its ghost would wander the house from time to time. It would just enter the room and stare at you, and it had chameleon-like eyes. You'd have to avoid making eye contact with it, otherwise it would control your eyes to start working like a chameleon's. He told me how his eyes would start darting around randomly in opposite directions, totally splitting his vision at points, though it only caused slight discomfort. I also remember thinking my cousin's garden was full of snakes, because I would see what looked like black snakes coiled up. But they always seemed to disappear shortly after I spotted them. I remember on one occasion seeing my grandpa chase them, but they kept vanishing. It drove him crazy. He began to dig holes, thinking they had burrowed underground. But no, whenever he dug, he always found nothing. Later on in the summer, something my cousin told me next made it click. He told me that sometimes shadowy arms would slap against the windows. I witnessed this happening a couple times too, and when it did, it happened so quickly you could only catch it with the corner of your eyes. On many occasions, my grandpa would ask my cousin, did you see that? Referring to a black arm that would slither across the window. There was one time my cousin and I were watching a movie in the middle of a Saturday, and we could barely watch five minutes without one of them interrupting us, slapping down on the window pane. That's when I knew it wasn't snakes that were coiled up in my grandfather's garden.